So we're going to talk about um, the short film, Taking a Chance on Love. Now, who came up with the original idea, and where did it come from? I'll let you take that. Okay. So I wrote the script, and I was reading this book by Matthew Hesse, who's this British love guru who I heard on like Z100 on the radio just talking. And I picked up his book. He's talking about his book, How to Get the Guy. So I was reading it, and it's this really interesting relationship book about how women can take charge in the initiative and use these formulas that he gives when you're, you know, out in a club, at a bakery, in a coffee shop, in the library, how to, like, use these techniques to kind of get the guy. I thought it was just really cool. I was like, wow, you should write, there should be a romantic comedy about this, you know? And I've always wanted to be in a romantic comedy, and you know? I've always wanted to just kind of create my own romantic com, rom-com. So I did. I reached out to Matthew Say, and uh, they got back saying, you, yeah, you can totally use the premise of the book, you know, and that's kind of what we did. And I, I called it Taking a Chance on Love instead of How to Get the Guy. And I kind of just created these three young women who are living in Los Angeles, and uh, they, they all have their different love stories. And this book kind of comes along, and kind of takes them on to a new adventure with with love and they kind of the main girl Brittany kind of it is is the one that's most affected by it because she's just has heartbreak after heartbreak and just, just doesn't doesn't know what to do and she kind of uses this book and at the end of the story she kind of realizes she didn't really need the book she kind of just needed to kind of trust herself be herself and kind of just be more open and just kind of trust the powers that be so yeah <laughs> I just want to add that um, you also, it was originally uh, the, the need to create was, came from the need for you to want to perform and write a scene for herself. And from that, combined with reading this relationship um, book, uh, and we changed up everything. So it was really just a matter of the concept and the idea and then you creating your own story based on the need to perform and the idea of a young woman stepping out of her comfort zone, I think, and doing that. Um, yeah, so. I thought the premise of the movie was about taking a chance, wasn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> it is about taking a chance because this, the lead girl, Brit, the main character, Brittany, she's kind of just plays its status quo, plays it safe, you know? And uh, I kind of felt like, and the, at the moment in my life, that's kind of like where I was at, you know? And, and just kind of, like my mom said, waiting, I wanted to perform, kind of just waiting for that, not waiting for the opportunity, but just kind of not taking things into my own, con my own hands, you know, going to open calls, going, on a, going to auditions, putting myself on tape, um, you know, just the control was, it was out of my control. So like the character Brittany with her relationships where she was, you know, waiting for the guy, hoping the guy would ask her out. Um, I just was like, I'm going to take control. I'm going to create my own stuff, create my own romantic comedy. I'm going to be the lead. I'm going to take a chance and see where this but where this thing takes me, you know, I'm going to just use my friends, use what I got, use my sister, and who knows, you know, who knows what's going to happen. I'll just take that chance. So kind of like her, she kind of is taking, she kind of takes this chance, you know, she's this shy, quiet girl, and she takes this chance to kind of put herself out there and to just kind of take on the world, and she doesn't really know what's going to happen, but she kind of just deals with it with the support of her her family and her her her, fr her girlfriends, yeah. So I'll just I'll just add to that as well. I mean, what Rafaela created in her own taking a chance is um, it was a leap of faith. I, I just want to add that because a leap of faith in herself, a leap of faith in the process, a leap of faith for me because it really is the first narrative short um, film that I've ever produced or directed outside of music videos. Um, and then encompassing the creative talents of her sister and then having, like you said, a pool of friends and, and then writing parts that came to her. I mean, it was funny watching, funny in an enjoyable sense, watching her create the different characters and then the different scenes. And interesting, yesterday I went to um, 
cocktails and conversations with one of the directors here at Dances with Films, which is really wonderful because you get to see what uh, filmmakers before you ha have experienced. And one of the things that struck me is that Dan Myrick, who is the director and writer of the Blair Witch Project, said that all films come from one idea, one conversation, one sentence. And I really think that Taking a Chance on Love, the short film, is that. It came from one idea, one need, one conversation, one statement. And then from that, we created a, a, a short film that really was a lot of fun. I mean, collaboratively, family, um, and then for me as a producer, uh, being able to empower young people, not only these two women who are my daughters, but young people who come here to pursue this and have talent and have um, the desire and the passion to work, and we created that opportunity. So I'm, I'm really proud of what she did and, and what we did. So we took a chance, and yeah, I think that's pretty honest about what it is about. Did you want to say anything? Uh, sure. <laughs> you took a chance. You, you're the one that reached out to all your friends. and Yeah, um, so I actually had a lot of fun watching my sister write this project. Um, when she was just describing the characters, I was like, oh my god, this person from my class would be perfect. Oh my god, this person is perfect for it. And then she was like, oh my god, they are perfect. So then we did it, and then it just came to life when they were all... All my classmates were doing the show. Everyone was just perfect for the parts, and it was just really fun to watch everyone. And having the opportunity to work with them, it was a lot of fun, and I enjoyed it. And I was proud of what I did when I casted it. So, <laughs> now talk to me about um, why is it so important to have this sort of this project as a family affair? Um. Well. Uh, from a, a family perspective, this particular project is, I mean, really I'll say the driving force between all of our family projects thus far has been Rafaela. And that is um, her desire and commitment to create content. And, you know, the girls are out there doing their thing. I mean, she just finished a two-year conservatory. Uh, Rafaela has studied. She's been on the East Coast performing. But in between all that, when you're waiting for the phone to ring, agent, um, submissions, whatever, there's this space. And as artists and living with artists, um, you need to constantly be creating. So kudos to Rafaela because her persistence to need to create has propelled a family affair. So um, that support system has really been, I think, um, strengthening uh, both creatively and as a family. And then the content and where we're going and the different projects that are coming to Capriccielli, which is our production company, are family-based. And uh, our music video, which um, uh, screened yesterday, So What, also, again, inspired and written by Rafaela, and then the concept of the piece was based on our musical theater roots, um, strengthened the family collaborative experience, as well as beyond just our nuclear family. Um, we reached out to uh, young people from the East Coast at, when we produced that project, and again, did the same thing gave opportunities to young people to perform um, in our project. So our family goes beyond Capriccielli and who's sitting here on the couch. It goes to the community of artists that um, we uh, meet along the way and have like minds and like spirits. So that's what I wanted to say about family. Do you want to add? I just think it's I just think it's cool. I think that uh, we're going against against the grain. We're kind of creating our own way and where we built something, just the fact that we we all grew up on New York in New York, and you know started with my grandmother, my nonna, my aunts, my cousins, us. We're all involved. We're all involved in it, and we kind of were, I guess, the first generation that kind of took it to the next level, rather than just staying home and doing it as a hobby, and kind of just saying we're gonna do it for real. We're gonna make. Grandpa Tom proud and make a name for Cappuccielli and we're gonna do our thing and show the world and share our you know 
fulfill our, our life's purpose and create art and inspire others and you know help other people's dreams come true you know like expanding into the community using our friends using our classmates using our employees that you know are here trying to do the same thing and just kind of creating creating a larger family a larger family yeah. it's cool i want to be the next barry morris <laughs> i want to you know i want to just keep creating and i want cappuccielli to to keep doing its thing and it's important that we stick together i think we're stronger and more powerful that way and it's kind of cool that you know you know my brother is an actor my sister is an actress you know my mom's a, a former actress now producer director uh you know Chris Jenner in the making, no. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so I think yeah, family. Yeah, hair, we have we have a hairline coming out, or if anybody would like us to endorse uh, hair products. But yes, <laughs> so I think it's it's uh, it's important that we keep it all in the family. That's kind of what makes us unique and makes us Capriccielli. Yeah. Do you want to I am just really happy to be a part and have a family uh, and have a mother like I do who is very persistent with everything and she's always doing something and she always wants to do something. <laughs> all her emails, I just love it. I love every part of it. <laughs> just being a part and doing all the projects. Um, I just feel very, I feel special to have a mother such as her and a sister who's an actress and who's very passionate and a dad who is a writer and who's very passionate and a little brother who's really into it and just to come from a whole family of actors and actresses it's just crazy and just being out here in LA it's just crazy so I'm happy. How did you guys come to the decision that this would be a short film not a, f like a full feature f you know movie length film or a music video I mean h how did you come to that process? <laughs> really quick I'm not going to talk long um, I just really quickly the decision was budget the decision was stepping stone um, so less is more so in, in order to execute uh, the goal and to do it quickly things fell into place which made sense budget crew cast and timing so that really was for me as a producer the deciding factor to do a short film uh, not to do a music video. We already did a music video, and we knew that the sum of Raffaella's songs that she had written um, would cross over into this, and Raffaella is uh, pretty prolific in writing lyrics and music, so the music video will come after. There is a song featured in the film, um, which she wrote after the fact called Fearless, and it's in the running credits, and we are um, uh, due to slate production for a music video in July. I originally was just writing a scene so that I can act. And then I was, I just, I ended up writing three scenes. And then I just thought to myself, why not make it a short film? And just because all the, the, the scenes kind of had to do with like three different love stories. I just thought I would make it into a film and it kind of just made more sense. Didn't really make sense to make it into a two hour film, three scenes, so I made it into a 15 minute film. <laughs> and that's kind of why it was a short film too. Was the transition from music video to short film um, difficult for you? Uh, you know, music video, as we saw in yesterday's screenings, the program was artistry, like a, a very diverse form of artistry using a mixture of art forms. And one of the things that, um, for me, our music videos thus far are very, very much a story as, and could be transferred visually to the stage, which is my background, theater, musical theater, as well as visually to the medium of film. So um, I don't think taking a chance on love is that far different than the way I executed the storyboard or we executed the storyboard for, um, the music video to the to the film and with that I'll also say you know my husband and, and being an actor I am an actor I've done a lot of commercials but my husband's in advertising and so having that sounding board of someone who has been on set and knows the process of storyboard the writing and the rewriting to storyboard to executing 30 60 90 second spots 
it, it, it's just really expanding upon the 30, 15 second, 30, 60, 90 second, to um, three minute music video, to progression, next step, 15 minute short film, so. For you as a writer, the transition? I mean, it's just a different, they're just different forms of storytelling. They're both, I mean, both were inspired by extensions of my own life and love and relationships and what I was going through. So in that sense, it wasn't different. It was just a different uh, beast to battle in the form of how we were telling the story. Yeah. Not to be too personal, but uh, you found love, right? Actually, my current boyfriend, I did. I used this formula. He's super shy. He's like this big, tough guy, but he's super shy. Like you know, tattoos and all. He's but he's super shy. And I worked with him. And then one day at work, I just you know, was all suave and said, "So you gonna swipe me out?" Like, but because yes, he was my boss. And he had to swipe me out, you know, so I can clock out. So, um, could you talk about your uh, upcoming projects? So, um, right now, uh, things are on a trajectory that's really, really exciting. Uh, so What, Taking a Chance on Love is one arm of the projects that we have in development. Like I said, we're going to be doing a music video, um, which is the soundtrack that's on the ending credits of Taking a Chance on Love. and. Um, you know, I'll let Raphaela speak to this, but she's in the process of writing uh, additional um, uh, episodes for Taking a Chance on Love, but the, the title of the project is based on the song, Fearless. So we're playing with the word Fearless, Taking a Chance on Love, and further developing the story and plot between the relationship of Shoshana and Brittany and um, Jill. Those are the three main uh, friends. And they're, um, then that's the, that's the most exciting project that we have going on right now as the horns are beeping in LA. <laughs> um, I don't know if you want to talk to that. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to, Taking a Chance on Love is going to become Fearless, which is going to become a TV series. So I got some more episodes in the works writing. So that's what I'm working on currently. And then she's working on a lot of other things. Yeah. <laughs> and the only thing that I'll say, which is a little off to the left, is that in the vein of young people and in extending family to the family, um, you know, there's other projects that we're doing that are very much about young people and um, the, the truths and the realities that they go through. So I, I directed a play in November, Dog Sees God, Confessions of a Teenage Blockhead from that. I have a documentary that's slated um, and just got picked up, which I'm really excited about, so I'll be finishing that. And then we have a feature film in the works that if everything goes well, I'll start principal photography in August. And it's the same themes that are covered um, in the uh, high school realm of identity and crisis formation. So, really exciting. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank very you much. so much. Thank you. Not a problem. Thank you.